The beauty of the Seventh-day Adventist name is that the first part points to creation, so we know where we came from, we know who we are, and uh, originally that set us apart from other denominations. I guess it still does today, but uh, it was a stark contrast that these were Christians who kept a different day. I like people to say the whole name, Seventh-day Adventist. It's the great controversy theme in one name, and it points towards the climactic events which all of us as Seventh-day Adventists are looking for, the blessed hope the coming of Jesus Christ. Our mission is to take the everlasting gospel to the entire world. We need people who are properly prepared, who know the gospel, people who understand how to share the gospel, who have been taught to communicate, who have been taught what it is to reach out and touch people. The greatest two in communication are the people. And it's fundamental to have the Holy Spirit to be filled by Jesus because it's very hard to lie with the body. Of course that we have all kinds of gadgets and technologies, but above everything, our personal testimony, our word about you know hope, about Jesus, this is essential in the communication of the gospel. Christ came and, uh, as we all know, spent a great deal of his time mingling with people and in the mingling he won their confidence. And it was in that sort of mingling that he was able to do so many, many good things for people. Uh, not only did he heal, of course, he did preach. And the message that he preached was empowered by the fact that he was such a kindly, caring uh, physician. We now have many non-Christian religions that we are trying to relate to, and I still think that that seventh day is very important in relate, relating to people from Jewish backgrounds, from Hindu backgrounds, from Buddhists, because it tells us God created us, we're special, we have an identity, but also wrapped up in that, and you see it in the Old Testament, is that not only does He create us, but He redeems us. Because we know where we came from, because we know who we are, and because we know that God has put a plan of salvation in place to rescue us from our brokenness, and because we know that eventually that will all be resolved when Jesus comes again, that's just great news. And we want to share it in the best possible ways. And there's no one way to share this good message. Vittoria seems like any active 10-year-old girl. She loves to spend time with her parents and brother Daniel. She even has a pet toucan named Samson. Yet Vittoria has done something most young girls haven't done. She's planted a small group that meets every week to study the Bible. One day a week, Vittoria climbs into her small canoe and paddles her way up the river that her family lives on. The river is part of the Amazon River Basin, which covers this part of northern Brazil like a million slithering snakes. With skill and determination, she makes her way upriver to the houses of friends that she picks up to take to the Bible study. Vittoria explains why she's willing to navigate such a big river in such a small boat. I had to take a canoe because I had no way of going in a bigger boat. I'm too small, so I had to go with a canoe. Sometimes her brother comes along to help out, and when the canoe is full, they make their way to a path that leads them into the jungle. They walk on top of fallen logs, trying not to fall off into the thick mud that covers the forest floor. They finally come to a small hut on stilts that overlooks another outlet of the river. This is the home of another friend who has offered to host the Bible studies, as long as he's allowed to attend as well. The young people start with prayer, 
and quickly opened the small groups magazine produced by the South American Division to use as a study guide. They also used the Sabbath School lesson to guide their studies. After a discussion on the topic of the lesson, they sing songs and close with a prayer. Vittoria gives a simple reason for wanting to tell her friends about Jesus. Because I want to be in heaven with them. Three of Vittoria's friends have been baptized because of her witness, and they are inviting more friends to their weekly lessons. If a young child is willing to brave a big river to share her faith with her friends, just imagine what we all can do to help spread the gospel around the world. All we need is a little faith, courage, and the work of the Holy Spirit, and we can do wonders in Jesus' name, just like a little girl up on the Amazon River. Media, internet, television, children's ministries, women's ministries, health ministries, publishing, the whole gamut, they're all needed because we have a holistic mission and we need to meet people's needs where they're at and we need to find ways that will connect with people in different cultures, different circumstances. Education should be the heart of mission or perhaps the lifeblood of the church's mission. Yes, of course, Jesus is the center of all we do, the center of education. But education is what brings it all together. And I think of the lifeblood because education touches every facet, every area, every ministry, every service, every structure of the church. After coming out from her vision, Ellen White told her husband, James, you must begin to print a little paper and send it out to the people. So the mission of the publishing ministry is embodied in that one sentence, printing and circulation of Seventh-day Adventist literature. Uh, we seek to identify our mission as a revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, it's not that we necessarily can portray all the doctrines of Seventh-day Adventist Church, but we should, by every person who interacts with a patient, be able to demonstrate the compassion of Jesus Christ. People are desperate to have hope. When they look to the news, there's no hope in the future. And we have this assurance that Jesus is coming very soon. So if with conviction and passion we tell to the people Jesus is coming soon, I think that this is very, very basic, very fundamental to bring hope into the heart of people. The name Seventh-day Adventist is such an exciting name. Now, obviously it was heaven ordained, it was blessed by God because it tells us where we're from, the seventh day, the capping of creation, and it takes us through then to the very end of the earth, which is the second coming of Jesus Christ. So in essence, when you say the name Seventh-day Adventists, you're preaching a sermon every time you say it. We need to be reinvigorated with who we are, why we're here, and who's coming soon to take us home.